Good morning. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to our worship service. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm Pastor David, your associate pastor for visitation, and I'm up here with our esteemed senior pastor, Pastor Doug. And it's good to see everyone here today. How many of you would rather be here this morning than in the finest hospital in North Carolina? Okay, that's, that's a majority. Um, after the service, you can go up to Fellowship Hall for an IV if, uh, if you need it. <laughs> a few announcements we want to make. First of all, did I mention food yet? Well, we've always got food announcements. Uh, the Youth Spaghetti Supper is coming up on Wednesday, March 29th, and the youth will be selling tickets between the services today. So be sure and get yours. Proceeds will go to support our youth mission teams this year. As uh, COVID seems to be getting less severe, it's still around, of course, but maybe a little less severe, we're uh, branching out and uh, taking uh, uh, trips again, including we're going to take a trip to Italy in the fall. Um, and we're going to go to Assisi and uh, follow in the footsteps of St. Francis. And so if you'd like to learn more about that trip, there's going to be an information meeting this afternoon right here in the sanctuary at 4.30. And uh, now I've already mentioned food, but, you know, the Bible says man shall not live by bread alone. So we not only offer physical food, but we offer spiritual nourishment at our church. And we have a Lenten study uh, starting this Wednesday at 10 a.m., led by Reverend David Gehring, on the working of the Holy Spirit. Uh, for more information, you can uh, call the church office. And there's a fellowship time uh, later this week on Thursday night. If uh, you're kind of in that empty nester stage, uh, maybe 50s or 60s, um, we're going to meet at the venue on Thursday night. You can find out more about that by checking out your bulletin. Next Sunday... Spring forward. <laughs> Daylight savings time changes next week. Don't forget to set your clocks forward. Spring forward an hour. Thank you, Pastor David. <laughs> and uh, also next Sunday, we're in the midst of, uh, of a collection drive. And next week, we're going to be collecting um, deodorant and other hygiene products for uh, students at Snipes Academy and Freeman Elementary Schools. So if, uh, while you're out, if you're going to the grocery store, CVS, Walmart, wherever you're at, um, if you could pick up a couple of extra um, hygiene products um, then, and bring them on in next week, um, that'd be great. Well, I think that's all the announcements that we mm -hmm. have for today, so let's continue now to worship the Lord our God.
Our congregational opening prayer this morning is printed in your bulletin so that we can join our voices together as we pray this prayer together in unison. Let us pray. Jesus, as we journey with you to Jerusalem, keep us close by your side. Give us strength to follow you wherever you lead, even to the cross. Amen. And now we continue in worship by turning to hymn number 64. As we sing together, Holy, 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 I invite you to stand as you're able, and let's join our voices together. Number 64. Before you retake your seats, let's greet one another, greet those around you as we pass the peace of Christ. We continue in our worship now with the reading of the psalm for Lent, and Connie Rogers will be coming to read the psalm today. Good morning. Before I begin this morning, I just want to tell you that if there seems to be 
an aura on this side of the church, something bright and shining. It's Shirley Anderson smiling because her family's with her today. <laughs> I told her, I told her when I came in there would be no containing her because she said, so watch out for things to come. We love you, Shirley. Today's psalm is Psalm 130, and this is a testimony to trust in the Lord. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness. Therefore, you are feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word, I put my hope. More than... My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen wait in the morning. More than watchmen wait in the morning. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord. For with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel for all their sins. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Thank you, choir. We've had a really busy weekend uh, with a lot of folks from church. Friday night was our annual oyster roast that was uh, led by our Methodist men, and want to thank them for uh, putting that together. And then uh, throughout the weekend, on Friday and Saturday, we had some of our young families uh, took a spiritual retreat to Camp Kirkwood, and our confirmation class just got back from Camp Don Lee. So it's been, a, like I say, a very busy weekend for a lot of folks in the church. I want to thank you, all the participants, but especially all the volunteers that helped to make those things happen. Let's go to God in prayer. Lord God, today is the second Sunday of Lent, a season of repentance, of self-examination, of silence, and waiting for the leading of your Spirit. Through your Holy Spirit, you lead us into the temptations of Jesus, our own 40 days in the wilderness, where our lives are laid bare, and we come face to face with our desire for power. Power over our own lives, over the lives of our friends and enemies, and maybe even power over you. Open us up to your grace and mercy, to your love and provision, as we confront the devil's temptations, all the demons that try to run our world and our lives. Give us the power of your Son, that we may throw off the insidious powers of sin, the forces of selfishness and pride the forces that keep us from confronting, from confronting the truth about our lives and our world. May we resist the temptation to find our rest in places that muffle the cries of injustice, the desperation of the needy, the anger of the wronged, the despair of the hopeless. May we use this season of Lent to empty ourselves of all that makes us deaf to the word of God, which is already on our lips and in our hearts. Hear us now, Lord, as we lift up the people and places of hurt in our lives and in our world. During the season of Lent, shatter our illusions, save us from ourselves, and open us to a new life of your Spirit, a life of faith, hope, and love. As we let your spirit lead us into repentance, may we discover the goodness and fullness of life in your kingdom through our Savior, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now I'd like to invite our ushers to come forward to receive God's tithes and our offerings.
Thank you to our handbell choir and to our flautist, Tori McLam. We're glad that you're with us today. Thank you so much. It's now time for the children's sermon, so I'd like to invite any children that are here to come down and meet me up front. Come on down, kids. Good morning, everybody. Y'all having a good day? Yeah? Yeah? I thought the sun was shining. It's really pretty. I thought it'd be fun for us to go to the park. Wouldn't it be fun to go to the park? So let's pretend we're going to the park today. So um, you can bring your horse. That'll be great. And um, just follow me, and we're going to go off to the park. Okay? Can you follow me? All right, you ready? All right, here we go. All right. Follow me. Up oh, first, we're going to go to the woods. So, uh, so here we go. We're going to go into the woods. And oh, there's Pastor Julia. She's praying here in, in nature. So come on, everybody. Come on. Let's go. Keep coming. Say hey to Pastor Julia as we go by. And as we leave the woods, we've come to Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. So um, let's say hey to Mr. Rogers and Mrs. Rogers. All right. Come on, everybody. Yeah, and then I thought it sure would be easier if we took a van. So um, can we take a van? This, his name is Van, so uh, he's going to come with us, and, um, and let's all go to the park. And um, I, when I get to the park, I'm going to get on the biggest slide there, and I'm going to slide down. I can't wait. What do you all want to do when you get to the park? Swing, yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Don't know what you're going to do? Just going to play? Just going to run around? I'm going to climb the rock wall. Yeah, you're going to climb the rock wall? Okay, <laughs> let's keep going. Let's keep going. All right, here we go. All right, oh, stop. We've come to a road. We've come to a road. All right, come on up so you can see it. Come on up so you can see it. See the road? See the road? Yeah, so what do we do? we got to stop, and then what? <clears throat> Look both ways. That's right. We've got to look both ways. And you know what else helps? Probably ought to listen. Make sure nobody's coming. I think it's safe. All right? Let's go. All right? Come on. Let's all go. And uh, up. Oh, we're at the park. Look at all these people over here at the park. They're having so much fun. It's good to see all of you. Yeah. Wow. All right. Let's have a seat. I want to talk about coming to the park. All right. Come on. And um, thank, no, come on, guys. Come on, guys. Come on. We got to take the van back. We can't leave the van at the park. All right. So I want to talk about what we did. Thanks, Van. You're a great sport. Um, I want to talk about what we did when we came to the road. What did we do? Yeah, we stopped. We looked. And what else did we do? And we listened. That's exactly right. We stopped, we looked, and we listened before crossing the road. But you know what? That's probably some pretty good advice for any decision that we have to make in life. If we get confused or we get scared or we don't know what to do, it's always good to stop, to look to God, and listen and see if God will give us some guidance, okay? So stop what you're doing when you're having a problem. Look to God and listen for his advice, okay? You think we can do that? Let's pray about that, okay? Dear God, thank you for all of these kids and all, everybody that's here today. Lord, when we have problems, help us to remember to stop what we're doing to look to you and listen for your help. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, if you're close enough to just walk home uh, you could, from the park, you can do that. Otherwise, we'll take the van. Okay? All right. Thanks, everybody. All right. Good morning. 
I'm Pastor Julia Hayes. I'm one of the associate pastors here. And I think after a nice morning of um, contemplatively, solitarily praying in the forest, um, I'm now ready to share with you the word of God. We are in a sermon series during Lent called Journey to Jerusalem, where we are um, following Jesus' travels uh, down from Galilee down to Jerusalem. Um, if you look at the front cover of your bulletin, you'll see the way that we are sort of paralleling that journey through our scriptures. Also, inside your bulletin, you'll see a lavender sheet of paper. Um, that is for you to write down notes uh, during the sermon. I know for me, it really helps me when I'm listening, if I'm writing too, even if I'm just drawing little squiggles, that helps me to learn. Uh, so feel free to do that. Uh, and you'll see our scripture passages on there as well if you'd like to read along. Our passage comes from Luke chapter 13, beginning in verse 31. Hear now this word. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed away from Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Holy and loving God, we are longing to hear a word from you today. God, I ask that in this time you would use me to speak to your people. Lord, anything I say that is not from you, let it be instantly forgotten. But anything I say that is from you, Lord, let it root deeply into our hearts. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As a pastor, I have been told to, as much as possible, avoid divisive topics. However, I think there's some things that simply must be addressed. Who here is a dog person? Okay, who here is a cat person? Okay, noticeably fewer. Let's take note of that. Um, if you had asked me any time before 2020, I would have said adamantly that I am a dog person. And not only am I a dog person, I am a dog person who actively dislikes cats. Here's the thing, right? Dogs are easy. Give them a couple treats, a couple belly rubs, and they will love you forever. <laughs> cats, on the other hand, cats are complicated. I've always wondered, why would I invite a creature into my house that isn't even going to like me? <laughs> so you can imagine my concern when my now husband, boyfriend at the time, decided to adopt a cat. Vinny, the cat, is eight pounds of black fur, claws, and chaotic neutral energy. Now that the three of us live together under one roof, Matt and I have a theory to explain Vinny's behavior. We're pretty sure that about 50% of the time, Vinny doesn't think he's allowed to live in our house. That's why as soon as he sees us, he runs away. The other 50% of the time, he thinks we are not allowed to live in his house, which would explain the biting and the scratching. He's constantly jolting between this running and this fighting. We offer him shelter. We feed him. We give him water. We play with him. We clean up after him. And in return, he sort of tolerates us. Everything that I had believed about cats was true. <laughs> and 
And yet, I love Vinny more than I can possibly imagine, more than I can possibly describe to you. He is adorable. And I want nothing more than to scoop him up in my arms and kiss him on his little head and pet him. And when he comes up to my leg and purrs, or when he hops into my lap, my heart melts. And I would absolutely throw myself in front of moving traffic to protect him. You know, owning a cat has had an unexpected benefit. It's taught me a lot about the relationship between God and humans. We see that in our passage today. Last week, we read that Jesus set his face towards Jerusalem. He'd been in the region of Galilee, which is about 90 miles north of Jerusalem. You could think about it this way. If Wilmington is Jerusalem, then Galilee is Goldsboro or so. Well, when Luke says that Jesus sets his face towards Jerusalem, it means, practically speaking, that he and the disciples are now on a focused journey in a direction. Now, they're stopping from time to time in various towns along the way, but they're not wandering aimlessly. They have a purpose. They have a direction. But when Jesus sets his face towards Jerusalem, those of us who are reading the story, who know the whole story, see an additional level of significance. We know that when Jesus sets his face towards Jerusalem, he's walking towards the cross. Jesus knows that Jerusalem means his own death. In our passage today, this is even more evident. We read that Jesus was moving from one town to another and teaching as he makes his way. Well, some Pharisees come to Jesus, and they seem to be well-meaning enough. They're telling Jesus that he really needs to get out of town because Herod, who governs the region of Galilee on behalf of the Roman government, wants to kill him. Well, instead of listening to this warning, Jesus says, go and tell that fox, listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day, I finish my work. I was reading this passage this past week with some of our young adults at Wrightsville Remix, and someone pointed out that this sort of sounds like Jesus' diss track, like that a rapper might make for someone that he didn't like. He continues, yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed away from Jerusalem. That last sentence would be a burn. Jerusalem is supposed to be God's holy city. Jerusalem is where the temple is, and the temple houses God's presence. Jerusalem ought to be the ideal audience for God's word, not the place that is most likely to kill a prophet of God. Jesus's frustration is clear. But even more than frustration, it's sorrow. Jesus says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. Since September, I've been leading Disciple Bible Study with several members of our congregation. Disciple is an intensive 34-week Bible study that covers the entirety of Scripture. And let me tell you, when you are reading the whole Bible, verse after verse, chapter after chapter, book after book, there's some themes that really start to emerge. What we keep saying in our class is, man, the people just do not seem to get it. (laughs) Over and over and over again, they mess up. God creates humans to be loved by God and to love God in return. They have all of their needs met in the Garden of Eden. And yet, the people listen to the serpent 
when the serpent tries to tell them that God's holding out on them. God gives the law, but then the people refuse to follow it. God is the people's king, but they decide they want a human king instead. The people break the law, and so God sends messengers, prophets, to help them, and then the people kill those prophets and messengers. Over and over, we try to write God out of our stories, or at least to make God just a minor recurring character in our stories. Maybe we even think that we're doing God a favor. Like, don't worry, God. We'll take care of ourselves. Don't trouble yourself. We'll handle this business of righteousness all on our own, and we will be very, very pleasing to you. You just sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. But that isn't what God wants. Jesus doesn't say, how often I have longed to gather you together, but you didn't work hard enough. You didn't read your Bible enough. You weren't holy enough. You didn't go to church enough. No. Jesus says, how often have I desired to gather you together, and you were not willing. Willingness is what Jesus is after. Unfortunately, willingness is just what we hate to give. If you imagine little chicks running around, the challenge for a mother hen is partially in getting them to slow down and stop moving. They're all going off in their own directions, Maybe they've seen the threat, whether it's a fox or some big bird, and maybe they're trying to run away from it. Those little chicks probably think that they are completely able to protect themselves from the threat and to solve their problem on their own. But what the mother hen knows is that the safest place for those chicks to be is under the protection of her wings. What if our instinct when we were threatened wasn't to jump into action, to find some way to solve our problems? What if instead our instinct was to slow down and let God pull us under God's wings? What Jesus wants is not for us to be impressive or productive or self-reliant, Jesus wants us to let him love us. He wants our willingness. We struggle to be willing. It means giving up our own wills and instead yielding ourselves over to God's care. But God is willing. Nowhere is that clearer than in Jesus. Jesus knows the history of God's people. And Jesus knows the human heart. He's one of us. He understands us. Jesus knows that he's going to be rejected. Jesus knows that his disciples will struggle to understand his teachings. Jesus knows that the Pharisees and the scribes are just going to keep making these power grabs instead of humbly listening to him. Jesus knows that the very people he came to save will kill him. And still, he sets his face toward Jerusalem. We might be stubborn, but so is God. God refuses to give up on us. No matter how many times we have pushed God away, no matter how many times we have scratched and clawed and tried to escape from God's arms, we fight and run away and God says, go ahead, I can do this all day. Today, Jesus laments over Jerusalem. 
longing to gather us together under his wings. But in a few weeks, Jesus will gather us together. Arms outstretched on the cross. Jesus will gather us in once and forever. We are stubborn. God is stubborn. God wins. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your stubborn love. Thank you for loving us even when we run from you. God, help us today to accept your love and to find shelter under your wings. We love you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One of the ways that we let Jesus love us is by sharing a meal together, a meal prepared by God for us, his children. So I invite you now to turn to page 12 in your hymnals as we share together in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us continue to pray in silence. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory Glory to God. God. Amen. Turning to 13, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine, 
Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. I'd like to invite those that are going to assist if they'll come forward now. And as they come forward, I remind you that the bread that we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup of salvation for which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Here at Wrightsville United Methodist Church, you do not have to be a member of our church or really a member of any church in order to participate in this holy meal. We consider it a means of grace, and so we invite anyone who wants to say yes to Jesus to come forward and partake in communion. And when you do, come forward ready to receive the elements as someone will give you a piece of bread. Go ahead and consume the bread, and then there will be a tray of small cups. Go ahead and reach for one of the cups and consume uh, the drink, and then you can leave the cups here in these baskets up front. You can stay here at the altar for a time of prayer or you can return to your seat. The ushers will instruct you as to when to come. The table has been set, so now come, taste, and see that the Lord is good.
very first Easter Sunday I ever um, was a pastor in church, and um, we had communion. I was pretty nervous being my first my first Easter, and um, I had the bread and the and the juice, and I said, "Pour out your Holy Spirit," <laughs> and the juice just went all over. <laughs> and I thought, well, what a more appropriate. Th- image for Easter than to you know, pour out Christ's blood all over the church. So um, if these things happen. Let's stand and sing our closing hymn. It's number 617, I Come With Joy. First and last. Go today under the protection of God's wings. And as you go, may the spirit of the living God made known to us most fully in Jesus Christ go before you to show you the way. Go behind you to push you into places you might not go on your own. Go above you to watch over you and protect you. Go beneath you to lift you up when you cannot stand. Go beside you to be your companion and dwell within you to remind you every day that you are not alone and that you are loved beyond your wildest imagination. Go in peace.